Hi, science teachers. This is a review of our 2023-24 science instructional guides. I'm going to just walk you through the important features and how to use your instructional guide. First, we do have some general information about how to utilize your content integration block for social studies and for science instruction. You'll notice for scheduling social studies instructional time, the master schedule states that you should have two days of science and social studies instruction at 85 minutes which is here um, per day and two days of science and social studies instruction, one with a 40 minute and one with a 60 minute um, per day. If you're doing the two brain booster blocks of alternating 60 minutes and 40 minutes, um, which is what most schools are utilizing, this does allow for 270 minutes of instruction per week for science and social studies. So I just want you to notice that this has changed since last year. Last year we had, um, two blocks of 40 minutes and we have um, decided this year that we were going to switch off with brain boosters. Um, so we're going to alternate. If we have 60 minutes of brain boosters, we would have 40 minutes of the science or social studies. And if we have 40 minutes of brain boosters, we're going to have 60 minutes of the science and social studies. Um, I want you to take special note that there is no science or social studies instruction on Fridays, but all of this time adds up to approximately 270 minutes of instruction per week. So some of you at your schools might laugh a little bit about that and say, that's not necessarily true of what is happening in my school or my classroom. Um, you may have just a little less, so we've adjusted our maps to fit that for you, but you need to be cognizant of the time that you're spending in science and social studies and how that's mapped into the master schedule for your specific school. We have asked your administrators to keep that time available for you, so we hope that your administrators have done so. Um, the next document in our is our actual master schedule. So you'll notice here, this is what we've asked our principals to have for you each week. So essentially a regular day includes your morning meeting which is up here. Um, it includes your literally literacy block of 150 minutes, your math block, your recess and your lunch, and then some dedicated social studies and science time. On Friday, remember, there's no science or social studies content. And most of you are in the category um, here for where we alternate a block of time with brain boosters. So this is where you see the 85 minutes twice a week that I talked about earlier. And here you'll see that two particular days, one will be 60 minutes of brain boosters alternating with 40 minutes of science or social studies. And the other one is 40 minutes of brain boosters with 60 minutes of science or social studies. And again, all of this time together is about 270 minutes. So if you are going to be struggling with this, um, talk to your administrator, try to figure out and with your team um, what you can do to make sure that you are trying to fit the science or the social studies into um, your day. So next we have best practices in science. Um, here are the following best practices as we teach the lessons that are in McGraw-Hill's Inspire Science. You will notice throughout the McGraw-Hill Teacher's Edition that there's little hints and helps, and those hints and helps help you ensure that you're implementing the, these best practices. We will discuss this about um, the three-dimensional science, and we'll look at this a little bit more in depth when we take a look at your um, Teacher's Editions for planning just a little bit later. So we have documents about the three-dimensional science. That is here. We have practices, we have cross-cutting concepts, and we have disciplinary core ideas. All of those are brought together um, to make up the basis of our lessons within the science, um, McGraw-Hill Science Inspire curriculum. So if you're correctly utilizing the McGraw-Hill Science curriculum, you will be teaching in a three-dimensional style as that's what's outlined in the McGraw-Hill curriculum. So here is just more information on the three dimensions. And this is what our, um, the three dimensions are. The disciplinary core ideas are those main concepts and ideas um, from your grade level content. The cross-cutting concepts are made up of patterns, cause and effect, scale, systems and system models, 
energy and matter flows, structure and function, and stability and change. These cross-cutting concepts go across all grade levels um, and they just help bring um, the connections that the students need in order to be successful in science throughout their entire um, education and also when they're work looking at things in real life. We also have our 5E learning cycle model. These five E's help us follow the three dimensions of science instruction. The five E's are engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. These are the five E's that are found in the McGraw-Hill curriculum. So as you look at your McGraw-Hill planning documents, you will notice that we will always begin with an engaging phenomena. That's here. Then we do some form of inquiry activity. This is followed by some form of either reading informational texts um, and or more exploring. Then we usually elaborate. We have minimal time for elaboration, so we skip most of this, and continue on with the evaluation, um, which is up here, where we're asking students to explain why the phenomena occurred. And notice that we're asking them to explain, not answer multiple choice questions. We're asking them to actually show what they know um, through deeper applications by explaining. So this 5e learning cycle model is best practice with our science instruction and it is how the McGraw-Hill science um, curriculum is set up. So we do have some supports as you are in each of those five phases in McGraw-Hill. We have included these teacher talk moves for you. So if you would like to use some of these sentence frames as you talk and support students through each of those phases, these are available to you and they are, um, they are highly valuable, I feel, when we're asking students to um, show what they know and when we're asking, um, trying to get formative feedback from them. So the next piece that we have in our common science section is disciplinary literacy. This is really important to remember. It's important to add that science and scientists don't just conduct experiments. Scientists read, they write, they communicate their findings. So speaking, reading, writing, and listening are all essential skills in the science curriculum. Um, we get a lot of feedback from teachers that there's too much reading and writing in science, but we're trying to build the skills that they will need um, in every aspect of their life. And if we can get them to think like scientists um, and to communicate scientists, we're building those critical thinking and communication skills that will help them throughout their life. So here are some science specific disciplinary literacy ideas. You can look over those. We then have included some scaffolds to support science literacy in your classroom. One thing that we've asked you to do is the CER model. Um, this is the claim, evidence, and reasoning. This is a model that we've taught first grade through 12th grade. This is our district-wide way we are teaching kids to organize their thoughts about making a claim about why a phenomenon occurred. So we would ask that you utilize these resources. There are sentence frames available for your use, a rubric, and a graphic organizer to help support your students. Um, details is next. It is an acronym and protocol for creating a graph. Um, some of you might not use this particular aspect right now in science. You might use it in math. It, this particular um, details helps students to create graphs. So in your math content and as we move into the STEM instruction in coming years, this might be something that um, is more pertinent to your class for now. So, but for now, your students might be making a few graphs here and there, but the details are what we have taught our middle school teachers and that's what they'll be using. Um, so if you wanna look ahead and maybe try to scaffold for that, um, for their later use of this, that would be maybe helpful for your students. So we also have the lens protocol here. Um, it is to help students look at graphs and data tables and gather information from them. We have included a few other specific items that you should be familiar with, like the close reading, text complexity, and text dependent questions. It is important to note that there's complicated um, informational text for students to read, 
in your McGraw-Hill Inspire Science curriculum. You'll want to use all of these specific reading strategies that you use in your ELA curriculum to help support students so that they can access the complex text. Maybe you decide you only want to read two paragraphs that are critical, or maybe you decide it's all critical and you want to read the whole page. It's very intense text, and so you're going to have students do it as a dyad read, or you're going to have them read one paragraph at a time that they maybe you have numbered, and they can draw a picture of something in the margins to help them remember the information from the text. So use your ELA skill set as you're completing the reading components with students in your science instruction. There are a lot of different resources for scaffolding um, that are found within this document. So um, I want you to remember that you will be having your students write in their McGraw-Hill Inspire Science student consumable notebooks. Um, that's going to be key to having them develop those writing um, skills that are so important. So you might want to give students the sentence stems that we have down here and use the teacher talk moves to try to help um, support their ideas. So the next section is our Inspire Science overview and adoption and resources that you'll be using. So we have the third grade science social studies block year at a glance to begin that off. Um, you'll notice that you will always, this is for third, fourth, and fifth, you each have your own year at a glance um, that's pertinent to your grade level, but the schedule stays the same. So keyboarding will take the place of the science and social studies block from August 21st to September 28th. Science begins October 2nd and will go through February 16th, and you'll finish off with social studies, which is February 20th um, through May 30th. You'll notice that we broke this essentially into blocks. So this is your content integration time. The first six weeks of content integration are your keyboarding instruction for grades three through five, and then we chunked your science and your social studies content. We have 15 weeks of science. Notice that it does not start until August 2nd, October 2nd, and it goes to February 16th. Um, and then you'll end with 15 weeks of social studies. It is chunked this way because we felt like students would be able to hold on to the narrative of science instruction a little bit better because they do have a phenomenon that they are connecting to and they have to explain that phenomenon at the end. So we thought if you were doing some science and then some social studies and then coming back to science, students may struggle with making some of those connections. So the other piece especially for fourth and fifth grade, is that we wanted to make sure that your science instruction was completed prior to the end of the year for testing for fourth and fifth grade. So with this schedule, you can complete all of your science instruction and you can then plan for some spiral reviews throughout the remainder of the year to make sure that the students are on track for their RISE assessment for fourth and fifth grade. The next piece we have for you is an Inspire Science Overview. Um, it does talk about the adoption of how we came to be using Inspire Science within our district um, and how it aligns with the national standards, not Utah standards. So there are some changes um, that you'll need to be aware of that I'll talk about later. Here it's um, talking about your Inspire Science resources. Each of you will have four teacher edition books. Um, they will be checked out from your media library specialist at your school. Um, Inspire Science also comes with consumable workbooks for students. And it is within these consumable workbooks that your students will be um, doing their writing during lessons. So access to Inspire Science can happen through Clever or Canvas. Um, Inspire Science video tutorials are next. Um, there are, this, is, this particular video is one of these, but there's also a model lesson um, from a fourth grade science. Um, and there's information about logging in through Canvas and McGraw-Hill Canvas LTI integration. So the next thing that we want to look at is actually what your curriculum map looks like for third through fifth grade. So they are about the same. Um, they're kind of set up the same. So we're going to go through a third grade map right now. Essentially, we'll always have the McGraw-Hill unit at the top, which lessons from that you'll be teaching. So we'll also have pictures of the workbooks in here so that you can see um, what your students will be working on. We have included the pacing here also. Um, it tells you the number of weeks and how many minutes it's going to take to teach these four lessons. You'll then see the strand from the State Office of Ed are here. This is kind of the big picture for all of the forces around us. And then you'll see the standards that will be met as you teach this unit. 
We've unpacked the standards for you into concepts and skills, and then we've developed learning progressions that are here that show how we will be getting to these concepts and skills as we teach this unit piece by piece. You will notice we have the end of unit competency with language features and functions, including some phrases to support science discussion. These words are critical words to teach as students are explaining. The phenomena having discussions in your classroom. There is a state released formative assessment for each one of your standards, which is found here and we've linked them so that you can use them at your discretion. They are not mandatory, they are optional. So you can use some of them, you can use all of them, or you can use one question from each of the assessments. Feel free to use them in any way you see fit. If you are a fourth and fifth grade teacher, some of these assessments may provide good practice for your students for the rise. So you may want to use a couple of them throughout the year. The assessments are formatted similar to how the rise assessment is written and assessed. We also have included the vocabulary words that we're going to be teaching throughout the unit. And we do have vocabulary cards for all of those words. Um, new teachers, you will be given, or you should have been given, um, copies of phenomena posters and vocabulary cards. If for some reason you need additional ones in your classroom um, or they cannot be located, just let me know and I will get them to you as soon as I can. So here is a skill building section that is next, which is found here and extension in your McGraw-Hill curriculum. You'll note that there is an act. Um, utilizing ACT, Access Complex Text and EL Support in Curriculum. They have included English language or ML supports within the curriculum. In the teacher margins, you can see a word um, and different ways you can utilize to access this text for students. Or here's an English language support also that is given. So there are a lot of pieces of McGraw-Hill that we simply cannot get to. And so anything that's in the elaborate section in your lesson plan um, is considered to be an extension for students who need it. Um, we usually essentially don't have the time and so use it at your best discretion. So we already went through the materials needed for the entire year, but this breaks it down into the materials that are needed for each unit. You will then see the wonders or envision connections for each one of the units. Um, that are down here. And one other thing I want to say about the materials, we purchased as a district the, the bigger pieces that you need to be able to do, have these um, effective lessons with hands-on experiences. Um, look around your classroom, ask your team um, if you have a hard time finding this information. Do not buy anything as a teacher. Go to your principal and see if they can fund things that might be missing. But first do the research and try to look around your classrooms, ask your teammates, um, because a lot of this stuff will already be here. Things that are consumables that need to be purchased from year to year, um, your principal should have a small budget for that. So do not buy anything yourself. So the next thing that you're going to see is wonders or envisions connections. Um, there aren't any for this particular unit, um, but for most of them there are. So you'll find them in this section. We've then broken down your lesson into the components so that you can follow along um, with your curriculum map and your McGraw-Hill teacher's edition at the same time. So for instance, this lesson is broken down to 150 minutes. And this is how long it will take to teach it. You can easily see the five E's within this. We have the engage, which is the phenomena piece that is so important to start out our lesson with. Um, remember, you have a poster for this that you should be hanging up in your classroom as you're teaching this. Um, it is critical that each day you're referring back to that engaging phenomena and connecting it to what students did and learned for that day. This helps us understand the phenomena we should be making connections to on a regular basis. You'll then see the explore, which is always an anchor activity. The explain is always a reading. There are several explains here that you can see. And then there's the evaluation. So with the evaluation, I want you to remember that we are asking you to use the lesson review, this part, instead of the multiple choice assessments that are also offered. Um, if you remember from our previous um, 
discussion about this. The writing is the best assessment tool to determine students under if they understand, um, and it makes their thinking visible more so than the multiple choice assessment. The multiple choice assessments are not rigorous enough to get students where we need to get them to in order to be successful in the RISE exam. So it's more important for you to do the lesson review rather than the multiple choice assessments that McGraw-Hill provides. Again, down here at the bottom, you will see possible extensions. These are the pieces that are from the elaborate section from the specific lesson. If you have time, go ahead and use them. Um, but if you don't have time, that's fine and you're welcome to skip those. Um, you can use them for students who might possibly need um, an extension um, individually, but most likely you won't have a lot of time for this in the classroom. So this has been a general overview of the McGraw-Hill resources in your instructional guide and a general overview of what the expectations are for science this year.